So as we talked about earlier, there are really three primary personas or roles of DSM users. So we're gonna start out today looking at, uh, at the tool from the perspective of the DSM end user. So I'm logged in today. Uh, I'm logged in here as, uh, as a DSM user. The users can see from the dashboard how many databases they have deployed that they own. They can get a list or click drill into a list of those databases. They can create a new database from here. Um, and then they can also see a history of all past operations that they have completed. Uh, the database list here is the same list that they would get by clicking on the databases from the dashboard. So you can see that this user has one Postgres database that they have created previously and that they own. We don't have any of these other kinds of databases currently. From this perspective, they can come in and they can take action against this database. They can do things like clone the database, which will make a new instance of that, uh, of that database in its current state. They can create a new version of that database from an existing backup. And they can also change the administrator user of this database. If we go in and look at the details, we can just click on the name and we can see a lot more information about this database. We can also do important things like copy the connection string so that we could connect this database to an application. But we can see what version of Postgres is running, uh, what state the database is in, how many nodes we deployed for this database. So for example, uh, this one was deployed just as a single node, but we could potentially edit that and change that to a three node instance if we wanted to scale that out. Uh, we can see where we placed this database, what storage policy was used, what infrastructure policy was used, the size of the VM, and the total disk size that we allocated when we created this. We can also do things like set up the maintenance window for future upgrades and see if there are any available upgrades currently. DSM is going to provide the owners of the databases and the administrators with some basic monitoring so we um, we can see any active connections, CPU usage. We can also get uh, information about memory usage, disk usage, read and write throughput, commits and rollbacks, as well as any deadlocks or conflicts that might be occurring in this database. So that's a good place to start if there are troubleshooting or issues with the database, or perhaps maybe database tuning might be needed. We can also determine if backups have been configured, what the backup schedule is, and, and what the backup status is for this database. If we need to collect logs for this database, we can do that here through the logs tab. We can just click on generate log and it will request a log bundle for this VM and it will be presented here in this list as soon as it's ready to go. So it gets created and then it gets copied to a storage location and then is available here for download and, and whatnot. And then we can also see a history of operations that have been taken against this database. So if, when we initially created it, that was one operation. Now we've just requested a log bundle. So that's in progress. Uh, if we make any changes to this, we come in here and do things like maybe change this from a single node instance to a three node instance, and we save that, that will be another operation that will take place. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and go back here and we're gonna create a new database. Now end users can create a database through the DSM UI, but they can also create a database through other means. They could use the API, they could use ARIA automation or a VCF automation. And they can also, by the API, create all sorts of other tooling and options to create databases. So you can provide an instance name for this database. And then we need to select, again, whether we want a single node or a three node instance. And then we need to provide a, an admin user username and a password. And from there, we need to determine where we're going to place this. Now, the end user really only gets the opportunity to pick 
uh, from a list of predefined infrastructure policies that they've been given, as well as storage policies that they've been given access to. And then they can pick what size VM they want to use for this post and how much storage each of those VMs will have. And by default, we're gonna have backups enabled, but if the user doesn't want backups for some reason for this database, they can disable those. And the same with the maintenance window. And if they need to add any advanced options, so name value pairs uh, options um, or parameters for this database, they can add them here. So they can add single parameters with a name and a value, or they could actually upload a file with a series of parameters if they wanted to. So they will just be given that option to select a file. And then finally, they'll be able to review and submit their request. So you can see that I've got a couple of different processes running at the same time. So I'm gonna log out now from my DSM user and I'm gonna log in as a user with the DSM admin role. Now the admins have access or visibility into all of the databases that have been created in this instance of DSM regardless of who owns those databases. Now you can also see that they have a lot more information here on their dashboard, things like global alerts, if there's any issues happening with any of the databases and a lot more options here on their left-hand menu as well. So let's start by going ahead and taking a look at the databases. So you can see that there are a number of databases in here. You can see those ones that were created by in DSM and were created by my, my DSM user. So you can see that DSM user is the owner of those databases. And you can see several other databases, some of which were created by the Kubernetes API, some that were created in RE Automation. Now I wanna show you something interesting here. You see that there's a little kind of a slash symbol here in the actions for any of these databases that were created via other means, via the API or via RE Automation. That's because day two actions need to be done in those source systems. So if I take a look at the database options for a database that was created here within the DSM UI, you see that I have some of those same options that my DSM user had, but there's another one here, which is change owner. Change owner is one of those options that only a DSM administrator has, and that gives them the option to, to change who owns that database and who, can, who has visibility into that database. So I can go ahead and I can see the same details that the DSM user could see for their databases, but again, as the administrator, I can see all of the different databases. I get the same monitoring options and visibility that uh, the end user has. And I can see backup status and I could collect logs and I could view the history and all of those sorts of things. So one thing that DSM administrators can do is set up users so they can manage and view users in the system. They can create local users here and they can also allocate groups from an LDAP instance to have access to DSM as well. That's one of the few things that can be done by multiple different types of users. That can be done by the DSM administrator, or it can be done by the infrastructure administrator. And I'll show you that from the infrastructure administrator perspective here in a couple minutes. DSM admins can view all of the infrastructure policies that are created by the infrastructure administrator. They can come in and they can see the details and they can see any of the databases that have been created using this policy, but they can't make any changes. There's no edit option here. Last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look here from an infrastructure administrator's perspective. So we talked about how the DSM virtual appliance gets deployed within vCenter as a plugin that gives it that ability to leverage a lot of the native constructs that are configured and set up in NB Center. So your storage policies and networks and, and all of that. 
So if I want to take a look at the configuration for the DSM plugin, I just go in to my cluster and I go to configure and you'll see that there's other plugins here. And down here we see the DSM plugin. This is where the infrastructure administrator is able to set up infrastructure policies like I talked about earlier. We can set up, uh, set up a policy, give it a description. We can enable or disable that policy. We need to be able to deploy to a cluster or a resource pool. So this is just going to say, uh, you know, indicate which cluster these databases using this policy are going to be deployed to. We need to provide a storage policy. And again, we can provide one or more storage policies. We need to be able to have a network to connect these, these databases to. So again, I, I you can select one or more network policies or networks, and then we need to have IP addresses. So we need to select an IP pool, and then we can select a folder. If we want these databases to go into a specific folder, you can see that all the other databases have gone into this uh, DSM databases folder. So we'll go ahead and select that same one. And then we can choose which uh, VM classes we want to make available. Maybe this is a dev environment and we only want small and medium to be options. And then we can go ahead and review the details and create that cluster. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here for now so I don't create a new one, but you can see then the list of all the policies that are available. We also can set up permissions. So just uh, similar to how the DSM administrator can set up permissions, the infrastructure admin needs to be able to set up permissions as well. The reason for that is if the DS, if the infrastructure admin couldn't set one up, they wouldn't be able to, to create an admin user to be able to go in and do the rest of the setup. The infrastructure administrator is probably also responsible for making sure that updates are available um, and applying those updates. Directory services setup is the same, as well as being able to view and upload existing certificates. So that's really kind of a, a whirlwind tour of uh, DSM as a whole. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this demo. Thank you.